Hello, hello, hello beautiful people. Welcome back to a brand new RuneScape video. For today's video, I wanted to showcase the loot from 100 Lunar Chests. If you're wondering how can you open Lunar Chests, you need to defeat all three Perilius Moons bosses, which are brand new bosses that came to RuneScape with the release of Varlamor. Today's video is going to showcase you a little bit about the fights, but most importantly, how much loot and how much money can you actually expect in doing this minigame or these new bosses for about 10 hours straight. So, with that being said, let's jump right into the loot video. Alright, let's take a look at the very first chest of the video. I plan on doing 100, maybe I'll end up doing less, uh, because this actually takes quite a long time. So let's take a look, starting off with some super combos, some bones, more bones, some irid leaves and darts. Chest number two, and this is basically just like barrows, and we get some swamp tar, some wormling bones, more super compost, and grimy harlander. Chest number three, I believe, we get some blessed bone shards. Soft clay, Haralander, Wormling Bones, and Darts. Chest number five, I think. Haralanders, a lot of Irrit as well. It's a little bit late, but let's see what we get in this one. Chest number, what is this? Six, I can't even see. More or less similar loot. Wait a second, I think I figured it out. I think every time you enter the room, you need to be the one dealing 500 damage. Pretty sure, yeah, because look, I'm the only one that just got teleported, right? But yeah, I think it's player by player basis. The rooms just keep turning. That's actually really cool. Let's see, yeah. See, it's in the middle of a room, but it's 500 damage I have to make. So now if I enter at the good time, I can get it down in like one go. Uh, there's two maple seeds, that's a new unique one. Chest number eight, and we get more maple seeds. Another one. I really hope I can get some uniques, by the way. Surely. <gasps> there it is. 10kc, and we get dual Matsuhuti. <laughs> Let's go. Wait, surely this sells for crazy number. All right, since we got a drop, I'm now gonna Google it and learn what this does. I don't wanna equip it if it works like Barrows. Dual Makuhitl is a two-handed weapon that requires level 70 attack and 75 strength to equip. Uniquely, this weapon hits twice per attack, though this is an aesthetic feature, rolling damage normally and then splitting it in two hit splats. Beautiful, let's go ahead, toss it on the Grand Exchange, see how much money we can actually get for our very first unique piece. That's pretty exciting. There it is, I'll take 1.6 mil, thank you very much, pleasure doing business. Alright, going for a back-to-back, -back. we get more maple seeds, chest number 11. Chest number 12 gives us just about nothing and it's it's bothering me a little bit because every chest is basically same loot. It's some herbs, it's it's soft clay and it's bolts. Lucky chest number 13 and I'm going to bed after this one, the usual. Good morning, 14, we get a maple seed, we get some blessed bone shards, number 15, the usual. 16, nothing. 17, maple seed, the usual. Number 18. Yes, we get Eclipse Atlatl. Dude, these names are hard. There we go, second item. And because we got an item, let's take a look and read exactly what this does. Eclipse Atlatl is a two-handed weapon that requires level 75 range to equip. Uniquely, it uses the player's melee strength bonuses when determining the amount of range damage dealt to the target. Wait, this has potential to be really good. So I can wear full max strength melee and use this as a range weapon. I think that can be really, really good. When warming all the other pieces of the Eclipse Moon set, the player gains the Searing Blows effect, where the Eclipse Adladl has a 20% chance to inflict a burn effect on the target. Whilst burned, the target will be dealt 10 damage over the course of 40 ticks or 24 seconds. Ooh, this could be good. I want to see how much this sells for. Let's go back to the Grand Exchange. Again, actively traded prices are super cheap, but I can see this being quite good actually so i don't want to put it in the market for this cheap let's see if we can get it back to back uh no but we do get a u seed which is pretty decent one fifth of the way done oh we got another one eclipse moon helm no way third item 20 chests so the eclipse moon helm requires 75 range and 50 defense to wear and then when worn with all of the other pieces of the eclipse armor set the player gains an eclipse set effect and then when we use the atlatl that's the weapon we just got we get 20% chance to inflict a burn effect. So we already know all about Eclipse Moon set. Back to back situation. And we get nothing in this one. 22. Uh, another use it actually. Pretty decent. 23. Nothing. 24. Nothing in this one. This one is the one. Surely. Next one is the one. Surely. 26. No way. I got another one. Blood Moon Helm. Surely this one's crazy good, right? 20 mil. 
Okay, looks like all the items are about like 1 to 3 mil range. Uh, but let's take a look at what this one does. So this one, Blood Moon Helm, requires 75 strength and 50 defense to equip. When it is worn with all the other pieces, the player gains a Blood Rager set effect, where the dual Makuhuiti, that's also the thing we already got, has 33% chance to hit one tick sooner. And then when you spec with that weapon, it guarantees that effect. Okay, so one tick sooner. I don't know how good that is, I'ma be honest. 27, another UC. That's probably the best drop you can get from here. 28, nothing. Nothing in this one. Chest number 30, not in this one. We back from a small break. There is a KC31. Let's uh, get a nice session going here. 32, you seed. A maple seed. Another one. Oh my god, we got a spear. Blue moon spear, KC34. What does this even do? Let's take a look. Bro, it's cheap as fuck. Why am I even doing this? Why am I doing 100 KCs of this when the items are worth 400k? Hello? This is a two-handed weapon that requires 70 attack and 75 magic to equip. And when worn with all of the other pieces of the blue moon armor set, the player gains the frost weaver set effect, where the spell spear has a 10% chance for its next melee attack to be unaffected by action delays. Okay, that is like really specifically weird. I'm lost, bro. Jagex, you lost me with this one. There's, it's too much complications. Let's go for a back-to-back. -back. This is the first water orb drop I get, I'm pretty sure. 36, we get the seed. 37, we get some seeds again. Another one, nothing. Nothing in this one. Big 40 coming in. Let's see if we get lucky. No, 41, nothing. 42, nothing. 43, also nothing. 44, Oh, there it is, another item, Blood Moon Chestplate. How much does this one go for? Like, I need to know. Ooh, okay, this is the first item. I don't know why I'm so excited about 2 mil, but the first item that's actually a little bit more than like 500k. Back to back? Nope. 46, nothing. 47, nothing in this one. 48, nothing in this one. 49, nothing in this one. Well, that's very peculiar. It took me this long to realize that this is actually a self-sustaining place. You can catch fish right here. You can grab the supplies right over here. And these potions are actually kind of insane. Look at my stats. It boosted it, everything for 19. It gave me prayer as well. So if you're wondering how you get this, I mean, I guess I might as well show it, right? For fishing, you grab the fishing supplies. You go over here on the bridge, you click here on the fishing spot, and then you align your net to catch fishes. Then when you exit, you can simply cook. That's how you make the fishes. And boom, we now have fishes. If you make kappa, boom, you now have full moving. So let's say you want to make potions, you grab your herbler supplies. I can come right here to the bush, collect from the bush. I can then use pestle and mortar on this, we're now making grub paste. I can use grub paste on the vial of water, all of a sudden we now have these potions. You don't actually need to bank, you can just deposit everything, put it straight to the bank and just keep your items and keep stockpiling on items. I didn't know that was a thing until 50 KC in, so I think I'm gonna just use that uh, from now on. Alright, this is gonna be a big 50, we're halfway done through the video and these potions are amazing, they're free divines and really good uh, prayer potions. Okay, 54 HP to 87. Is that like 33 HP or some shit? I don't know, my math might not be mathing, but this food is OP and these potions are even more broken. So 34 prayer to 70 prayer. And you're getting full like max out stats. 51, I think, you see it. Nothing in this one. You know what, since we're already here, let's just go to the bank and see how much we sold the other pieces for. All right, looks like we ended up selling the Moon Helm for 1.5 and the Blue Moon Spear for 1 mil. All right, I'll buy, I'll spend 1.5 million on this just to make an experience a little bit more enjoyable. So surely this will buy now, right? I spent 1.2 million on it. Let's get everything we need in order to create the landing site. All right, let's try to build this thing then. I'd say that's 1.5 mil well spent. I now have a bird and I don't, never need to do this damn run again. We begin with a lot of water orbs. 54, nothing. 55, nothing. Nothing, nothing. 58, nothing. Maple tree seed. Number 60, we're moving up in the world. Another U seed, very cool. U seed. 62. Yes, another item, a blue moon helm. How much will this go for? Looks like another like 1 million piece. This is actually looking really good. 8 out of 13 already. I am getting no dupes whatsoever. 63, nothing. I'm gonna quickly hit the bank actually. Looks like Eclipse Atlatl ended up selling for 2 million. A Blood Moon Helm ended up selling for 1.5 million. Um, this one, I'm just gonna leave it in for 1.5 as well. Uh, let it go a little bit over time. And then this one, I've had it in for 4.5 for a long time now. 3 to 50. Didn't take very long at all. This sold for 3 to 50. 64, 
nothing. Nothing. I mean, I guess UC is probably the best drop you can get from here outside of Uniques. 66. We get a UC. 67. Nothing in this one. 68. That's the weirdest one yet. 69. Not an item. Nothing. Nothing. 71 KC. 72. Two UCs. Okay, that's the best loot yet, I think. 73. And we get the usual. Nothing. Nothing. 76. Again, a lot of orbs. U seed. Nothing. 79. Yet another U seed. Big number 80. Let's take a look. Nothing in this one. 81. And we get another U seed. I have not seen an item in a bit, I think. Nothing. 83. Nothing. Nothing. Well, I guess U seed. And another U seed. 86. Nothing. Okay, I definitely haven't seen an item in a long time now. 87. I want an item, man. This one is an item. I know it. It's not an item. 89, nothing. Chest number 90. It's getting late and we're getting nothing. 91, nothing again. 92, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting milked though. 93, nothing. 94. Oh my god, finally we got an item. Blood Moon Tassets, beautiful. Ooh, okay, okay. The price of these might actually be pretty decent. This might be our best drop so far. Basically, when you wear this in a full set, the dual Makuhiti, the thingy we got earlier, the weapons, uh, have a chance to hit one tick faster, basically. 95 for a back-to-back? -back? Nope. Chest 96. I'll finish the rest tomorrow. We get another Usid. Good morning. I don't know where I left off yesterday, so here is chest number 97. Chest 98? Nothing. Chest 99? Nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, a big 100th chest of the day. Let's take a look. And we get a UCID. Nice. Now, to keep this video fair, I am actually gonna do one more chest, simply because we started on 1KC, we might as well end on 101KC. Here we are, 100th chest of the video. Can we get lucky? We cannot get lucky. Beautiful. All right. The first thing I want to check is my collection log. After 101 chests, I actually have a nearly fully completed collection log with no dupes, uh, which honestly, I think it's very good. So we ended up getting eight drops in 101 KC, which honestly, I feel like it's more on the lucky side, even though that one dry streak felt a bit long. I still think I ended up being pretty lucky in this. Again, I don't know the drop rates of this just yet. Now for the moment, we have all been waiting for. How much money did we make in this video? if we do not account for the cost that we spent on all the scythe charges and stuff like that. Now, we obviously also got items. If we look at the history, we've sold uh, Blood Moon Chestplate for 3.2, Blood Moon Helm for 1.5, Atlatl for 1.9, basically 2 mil there. Um, we've sold the Blue Moon Spear for a milli, Eclipse Moon Helm for 1.5, and dual Maku Huaiti for 1.7. Basically made decent money there. The place is pretty profitable. Obviously it depends how lucky you end up being. 7.1 million just from the trash loot. Now both these bone shards and the sun-kissed bones are untradeable. I'm definitely gonna go ahead and sell those. Okay, so my very basic quick math says that we made about 23.3 mil in the process of making this video. Now if we were to be super efficient, I do think you get about 10 10 chests an hour so I do think this video in total took me about 10 hours to make realistically a little bit more because I tend to AFK quite a lot when I play this game uh, so we only made about 2.3 mil an hour I'd say uh, not the best definitely not the best could be better um, but we had fun doing it and that's what matters I do hope this video helps you make a decision if Perilius Moons are worth doing for you. If the video helped you out in any way, shape or form, consider subscribing, consider giving the video a like. I would very much appreciate it. And I'll see you again very soon with another RuneScape video. Have a good one and bye-bye. See ya.